Welcome to another Scottish Watches video. We have got Martin from Martins of Glasgow with us today and he has brought with us just a selection of some of his personal watches and a few of his customers' watches with permission. Now we've got a watch roll here and obviously you've seen the thumbnail for the video so we're not going to dwell on this too much. So Martin, reach in and let's see what you've got. Yeah, here, yeah. let me undo this. This is the watch that started it all for me as far as collecting watches and it's actually on the only watch I've ever bought at auction. I bought this about 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a Bretling Long... This is a Bretling Long Player 815. Helps if you put it in front of the lens. Oh, so we'll sorry. put it here. There we are. <laughs> Bretling 815. This is a Bretling 815 Long Player. Right. Called a Long Player because it's got 52-hour power reserve. And wait for this. When I bought that watch, I was it was at Christie's Auctions in Glasgow. I was the only bidder and I bought it for the reserve price of... £100 plus commission. Right. And mm. if you were to do the same today, how much would you be looking at? I had Dinky sold one a wee while ago. I think it was for about $4,000. Jesus. What does that? But that was a while back. So maybe equates to, what's that equate to? 3000 quid, something like that. Mm -hmm. £3,000 perhaps. And I just love it. And I wear it regularly. It's not in the best of condition as far as the case. It's got a few scratches and marks in it. And I just love it. And I've actually, I've been wearing it uh, the past week. I just love that watch. So what's the details on it then? What's the movement? It's just what's nice. The... No, lovely. It's like I said, Bretling Long Player. It's got famous values, 7736. Right. Um, original Bretling, new, well, new, uh, uh, a Bretling strap mm -hmm. uh, with a deployment buckle that my wife bought from me and there's not much much else to say it's a manual wind takes a bit of winding because like I said it's got a 52 hour reserve mainspring on it and just classic chronograph features um, panda dial mm -hmm. black eyes down the sub dial there second hands to the left hand side just a nice watch mm -hmm. a wee bit small by today's standards compared to other Navi timers lovely watch yeah one you're going to keep then? Oh yes, I, yeah. I don't. I rarely, rarely sell watches. Yeah. Well, apart from in your shop. Apart from in the shop. <laughs> yeah, but this is one of mine. I just love that. Nah, that's lovely. Is there anything on the case back we need to show? Us? You just have the model number eight one five, which is there, fainted uh -huh. in. The number below is the actual watch number, and that's the number that you used so that I can date it to nineteen seventy four. Excellent. You see that number, that number there that's been engraved in the space in the back. Yeah. If you go into any website showing you Bretling numbers, that dates it to 1974. Bretling are quite good that way; they're easy enough to do. Excellent. Uh, excuse the condition of the strap, but it is well used. Well, that's the thing. Watches are there to be worn. Here we go. This is an iconic watch, and it was probably my first grail watch although i didn't really know about grail watches at the time mm -hmm. uh, we used to do buying campaigns for watches pre-internet adverts and newspapers wanted dead or alive right and one day somebody walked in after we're done this is an iwc international watch company uh, mark 11 famous watch movement caliber c89 and it's reckoned to be one of the finest military watches ever made that particular watch uh, it's from 1952, mm -hmm. and it's number 1989, so 1,989 of watches made in 1952. And I bought that from a customer um, probably around about 20 years ago. And that's this original, this bracelet here, this is known as a bonklet bracelet. Mm -hmm. and that's, I've and not that's, seen this before. Yeah, well, that's a bonklet bracelet, and that the MOD, when they were commissioning these watches, from the various watch companies and IWC, Jaeger, Lecoultre, etc. Mm -hmm. They actually insisted for the first batches to use these Bon Club uh, bracelets. After that, they had a change of mind a couple of years later and they went on to NATO style straps. So what is the benefit of this style? Fabulous over normal? Watch. Well, it's easy to wear. You could wear it, you can adjust it for your wrist uh, when you put it on. But it's, it expands kind of like, an, like a NATO strap. So if you had to wanted to wear it over a flight jacket, mm -hmm. you didn't have to start undoing clasps, etc. It just came off. It just right. came apart. Flicked it around, lock it in, and it goes because it was a navigator's watch. Right. RAF, used for the RAF navigators. Is this another one you're keeping, not oh, selling? Oh, yes. No, no. That, that's, that's, that one's a keeper. Yeah, right. that's the yes. They've gone up. The The price fluctuates a wee bit for these over the years. Um Probably, I don't know about values for these, maybe five or six thousand, maybe a bit more. 
there is, I'll show you another thing on the dial once you've done that. That sees the back, you've got the crow's foot or the Fion, as it should actually What's be known. The broad arrow thing? Yeah, the broad arrow, um, correctly called a Fion broad arrow crow's foot. It's got the reference number, lets you see there, and the number at the, the number at the bottom. That's the number 1989 stroke 19, lets you know it's 1952. Can you zoom in the seven? Can you do that? I'm the pretty seven? much zoomed yeah, in on it, got, yeah. That's got a, that's got a hooked seven. Oh, at the end. Yeah, see at the end, at the top left-hand side, that's yeah. a hooked seven. Now, I've got to say, the dial in this watch is immaculate. It's maybe not coming up great in the video because the glasses or the acrylic or the crystal, as it's trendy to call them these days, has got scratches and marks. But again, that's a watch that I wear. Uh, you wear this? I'll, yep, I'll have, that watch in, I'll have that watch in my wrist several times a year, maybe for three or four days. I try and rotate my watches. There's no point in them all just lying about. How is it for accuracy and timekeeping? Haven't tested it for a while. As far as I remember, it's pretty good. I do have a timer in the in the house, mm -hmm. and this keeps pretty good time. I think currently, last time I tested it, it was within about fifteen seconds in a day, which is more than accurate enough for. Yeah, you don't need anything that. more than that. I'm not anal about timing in watches for some for some bizarre reason. Maybe it's because I am about clients' watches. I don't mm -hmm. bother that much about my own. Believe it or not, Breitling Navi Timer Eight O Six. Okay. Now. Forget so this the, is what brand new, six months old. No, that watch, nineteen seventy on the button. I bought that from a chap who clears houses, licensed. I've got to tell you, not with and a gun. Not with a gun. Absolutely didn't hold anything to my head, and uh, not robbed or whatever. Um, he brought that in amongst other stuff. Hadn't a clue what it was. The condition you actually see that case dial in hands is as it is when it was brought into us. It was lying in a drawer in a paper bag. Um, all we've done is serviced it and ultrasonically cleaned the case. So it's either almost a new old stock or somebody 20, 30, 40 years ago has had it cleaned and serviced and then forgotten about it because all we've done is service it and um, ultrasonically cleaned the case and added this new lovely Bretling strap with with pin buckle. Yeah, fabulous watch. No, I was watch. I was kidding on a little bit there because when I was in recently seeing you when I was doing one of my Scottish watches tours, you had this in and you showed me it mm. and we both had a look at it. Me and Chris who was with me and we we're like, oh, that's a new watch. And you're like, no, nope, not at all. And then I asked if it had been refinished and you went, no, nope, not at all. This is exactly the way it came. It's got all the edges. The lugs are completely intact. And I mean, if anyone knows about watches, it's you. Because you told me you've had over 40,000 customers earlier. Yeah, we're, so, we're, yes, we're actually approaching our day. We, we've got a database for all our repairs. And don't get me wrong, some of them might be repeat customers or mm -hmm. watches coming back and forwards. But we are literally a couple of hundred of 50,000 50, right. 50, repairs which we will probably hit within the next week. And I've got to say, that's only since we started using the database about just over 10 to, t about 10 years ago, 12 years well, ago. Well, it's going to be massively more than that. You've been yeah. going since, what, the early 90s at least? No, 1987, 34 Jesus years Christ. this year. Okay, I was slightly off in my figures. Not the first time, won't be the last, but it's just to emphasise the point. You actually know about watches. It's not your a first wee bit. rodeo. A wee bit. So if you say this is... The daddy, then this is the no, that, daddy. That's, that's a lovely watch. Sometimes known as the Jim Clark. It's also it's the Twin Jets, but also sometimes known as Breitling 806 Jim Clark because um, although Jim Clark was famous for wearing an Enneker Sherpa watch, if I remember rightly. I stand to be corrected in that if I'm wrong. Um, he also wore this, this watch on occasion or that 806 on occasion. So it's um, sometimes referred to as the Jim Clark. People like nicknames for watches. That's nice. And for those who don't know, including me, who the hell's Jim Clark? Jim Clark, famous the Scottish rally racing driver. Oh, the rally one and only? Driver. Yes, the one and only. I thought they were From Duns. Different. Yes. From Duns, yes. No, I know all about that one, Jim he, Clark. Yes, he wore one of those. So sometimes if you look at, if you go onto the internet and search Bretling 806 Navi Timer, sometimes it will come up saying the Jim Clark Navi Timer. Are there any other watches named watch. after Scottish folks that you can think no, of? Is there a Stephen not. Henry? I don't know. Maybe no. there is. Uh, mm. That would be interesting. A Kenny Dalglish. That'd be nice. No, that is absolutely stunning. This this next watch is really important to me. Um, and it's the only watch that when somebody came in to sell to me, when I went in to the back of the shop to show Gail the watch, my hand was actually shaking. Oh. Um I had a phone call from a chap in Fife who said he had an Amiga Railmaster for sale. 
and I wasn't a big fan of the real ma- the new real masters or yeah. the old real masters with the big XXL real master. And I thought, well, we might be interested, might not. And he said, I'm in Fife. Um, can I come through in the bus and let you see this watch? And they said, yeah, have you had it for long? I said, yeah, probably about 40 odd years. Christ. And what happened was when he came into the shop and showed me and I said, ah, now this is something special. Very rare, probably even rarer than a Speedmaster of the same era because the three watches, Amiga brought them out in 1957. They brought out the Seamaster, the Railmaster and the Speedmaster. The Railmaster wasn't a big success for them. This is the Railmaster uh, CK2914. Drove through, showed it me. We talked, we did a deal and I bought it from him. Mm -hmm. Um, It's as rare as hen's teeth. Rarer than Speedmasters, but it's not as sexy as a Speedmaster, so it doesn't make the money that vintage Speedmasters do. But one of the things that makes this rare as well is the crown. It's got what's called a Nyad crown on it. And they also did use this in some Seamasters and some constellations. It's got a wee three-pointed star, and it's the only watch I've got that I'm nervous about wearing because if that snaps or breaks, they're almost impossible to replace. Right. And the big deal about this watch at the time was... It was um, a major anti-magne- anti-magnetic watch, an anti-magnetic case. It's got an iron shield inside, mm-hmm. and it was uh, resistant to, I think it was a 1,000 Gauss, which not a big deal these days, but was a big deal yeah. uh, back in 1958. And I just and that was because the, the railways and whatnot, big electromagnets. Yeah, electromagnets. The watches had to be accurate. The dial in this watch, and this is maybe interesting for watch geeks, the actual dial is one millimeter thick. Now, your average watch dial is usually about 0.4 of a millimetre thick or even slightly less. And why so was it? Because iron, to, for anti-magnetic purposes. Just more shielding? Yeah, more shielding. Right. And what's been done to this one when the customer sold it to you? Did you uh, have to do a lot of work? No, Just the service? It, it serviced it. Tidied up the case. Tidied up the case. I tied, I polished it. Again, I wear it. I've just left it as it is. And this is a guy you're keeping? Yes, oh, no, that, that's, yeah. These are some of these, I'll be honest with you, they will be for sale eventually when I decide to retire. Once you get the test results. Yeah, mm-hmm. get the test results back and I find out I'm a goner. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pension watches. Pension. No, that uh, is... I mean, I love that watch. I do wear it occasionally, but it's the one that I'm a wee bit nervous about. Yeah. There is a watch here, and I know we play games all the time with the podcast, mm. the website and everything else. I've not looked at this because you said, oh, Ricky, you will have a really interesting reaction to it. So genuinely, I've not seen this. Open up, let's see what it is. Right, you got your sunglasses on. Everybody should have a fun watch. And I've uh-huh. got to say, this is my fun watch, although it, has, it does have a deep personal meaning to me, which I'll explain once I bring it out. Sunglasses at the ready. Okay. Whoa. What the hell is this? It's a piece of cheap Chinese tat with a funny dial okay. with a big Superman logo on it. The story, and I'll, I'll do it as quickly as I can, a chap that owns an ironmonger store, uh, Annie's Land Cross in Glasgow. Sometimes we do batteries for watch watches for him that can't do. And he brought this watch in for me to do a battery for him. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, I need to own this watch. <laughs> I I had a friend, my best friend, was a guy called Jeff, and he was a bit of a free spirit. He was working in the bank, gave up, went to America, came back, ended up working in the woodlands in Tarbert Loch Fine, went on a fishing boat to fish and I'm very sadly he fell in and he died and he was but he was superman mad the two of us shared a love of american comics bearing in mind I'm talking 35 years ago mm-hmm. and he loved anything to do with superman collected comics paraphernalia anything so as soon as I saw this I said I've got to have this watch and I wear it once a year on Jeff's birthday. No, that's, that's what this it. is all about. And that's it. It's a piece of cheap Brilliant. crap. And I just love it. it. Actually, emotionally, it means more to me than any of those other watches there that are some of them which are worth a lot of money. That's not worth that's not worth a pound, that watch. Yeah. And I just make sure it keeps going and I just love it. And everybody is, should have a fun watch. At least one. And this is something we spoke about off camera before we hit the record button. You've been in this game longer than most and you are not a snob. If you want to show the watch you are actually wearing, I know you're not wearing it just now because it jingles about, if you bring it into shot, this is what your kind of daily beater is yeah. at the moment. And this is you see that? This is a Casio, right? Full the metal G-Shocks, jacket. But you've modified it with an yep. AliExpress well, just one more watch special, really. And yep. it's 
to resemble the Royal Oak. So you don't care about cost, you just enjoy horology for the fun. Yeah. And that's, well, that's the way it should be. That's the absolute class. It's the GA2100 that you put me on to a, a year ago. Um, Simon Porter of Porter's um, got one for me. It's fabulous. And as soon as I saw you could find these um, three, four weeks ago, AliExpress bought that on. Fabulous. I've got to tell you, the quality of the bracelet and the case and the clasp are just stunning. 50 quid mm -hmm. and 26 quid for UK customs and excise, the buggers. Yep. But brilliant no, watch. The bracelet doesn't jingle jangle. No. Nope. It's very, very solid, very well put together, and it completely converts the look on the wrist. Here we have the final watch of the day, and this looks a little bit mm, different. I've not seen one of these before. Can you tell mm. us what it's all about? Yeah, this is a Breitling uh, 1806 um, left-hander crown there. But is yep. it really? Well, mm. it's on its original bracelet, etc. Yes, it is really, and this is the second time. Um, the owner of this watch uh, was a serving officer with, um, in the military in mm -hmm. the UK. And what yeah. movement's this one got? That one, would you believe? I uh, can't remember the exact movement that's in that one. I've got a screwdriver, shall we find yeah, out? Yeah, we could take a chip to it and find <laughs> out. Let's see, I can't remember. And this is the original bracelet as well? Original bracelet, yeah. Everything's original. Nothing's Nothing's been changed in that watch. Now, I was giving you a bit of a kick in the ribs there about, was it really a left-hand drive? Now, the reason for that is because when you brought this out and showed me it, you said that you can swap between the two. So yeah, well, it work? can be. In, in theory, the movement can be turned. You can take the crown out, and if I, if I turn this round, you can zoom in. Rotate it, it, yeah. There's a plug. Ah. Well, that, can be, that can be removed. Mm -hmm. Everything, movement turned round, and the crown and stem can be put in there, and the plug in there, so it be, can be worn for somebody who's right-handed or left-handed. How do the pushers work, then? No idea. Because if your screen goes in, it just depends what way they want to do it. If somebody's left-handed or right-handed, they can wear it. It's got the ability to do that in that case, or they'd wear it the other way around. Mm. I think. I've never known. I've only ever seen that with the left-hand side. But the theory was that the crown could go on that side of the case. Interesting. Well, if anyone knows more than I do, yeah, or more let than us I do. know in the comments. Uh, we're always keen to learn if we're talking you tell us about it because you always do brilliant well listen we have rattled through over 20 minutes quickly scouring these watches if you want to see more which i think you guys probably will martin isn't that far away from the studio so you can let us know in the comments below and we can get him back to do more in-depth stuff on these watches macro shots wrist shots even out in daylight and he's got tons more so yep give us your feedback let us know what you think and if we can get martin back sooner rather than later we shall do so thank you very much martin if people Pleasure. want to check out martin's of glasgow you're on the interwebs instagram etc where can they find you you can find us on www.martinsjewelers.co.uk instagram it's at uh, martin's underscore of underscore glasgow and it's the same with twitter you actually use Twitter still? Yeah, now and again. Have you got a Bebo? In in Insta MySpace? Instagram, that, that's the one for me. I'm Instagram daft. Oh, yes, you are. So thank you once again, and we will see you soon. Thanks for having me. Catch you later, guys. Mm -hmm.